Last week, uh, coming from the thought of sustained success. Sustained success uh, out of Joshua chapter 1. I'm going to pick back up there on this week. Um, let God speak to us. I believe that there's, I know that there's still something here that, that God wants us to have unveiled before our eyes tonight about sustained success and we briefly just kind of spoke on last week about the intention of success that God brings to his children is never designed to be short-lived uh, but the, the success that he brings to our lives are designed to be sustained and we talked about that sustained is something that's ongoing something that's continuous um, does not mean that there will not be um, interruptions in your success does not mean that there will not be challenges to your success, but the idea is that even when the hand of God has lifted for that season, that there's still a measure of resounding success that should remain upon our lives. Mm -hmm. That's what a sustaining does. We talked about a sustained pedal uh, last week on the piano, on the keyboard, that is designed that when that pedal is pressed and that chord is struck, even when the pianist lifts his hand from the chord, there's still a resounding sound coming through because of that sustained pedal. It's designed to grab the momentum of a thing and keep it going mm. uh, even when the season has lifted. And that's what God intends for us, not just experience this partial success, this success, this fly-by-night success, but this a long, have a longevity uh, in our success. We talked about some things last week. Just a quick recap. We talked about territory uh, being the essential or the foundational nature of success. You've got to possess something in order to be successful. Can't be successful without having possessed something. So we talked about uh, that a little bit and what that does, what territory does is it teaches us accountability. It gives us structure and things of this magnitude. Uh, we talked about Jabez and all these things. Uh, one of the points we made was that authority uh, is always assigned with success. Just want to recap it so it makes sense when I pick up where I'm going. Uh, authority is assigned with success that you don't become successful and God not give you an authority so that you can remain successful. Mm -hmm. uh, he doesn't put you in a position to lead without anointing you with leadership ability. Mm -hmm. I'll say that again. That's good. He doesn't put you in a position to lead without in anointing or equipping you with leadership ability. Mm -hmm. He doesn't make Brett Evans a sheriff without giving him a gun. Yeah. Mm, how about that? <laughs> Because the name does nothing if there's no authority to enforce it. Yeah. He can flash his badge all he wants in a rowdy situation, but if he has nothing more than a flashlight, hmm. he really can't bring control to the scene. Hmm. So he can have a title, but if he's not equipped with what he needs to enforce the title, the authority. <laughs> then he can't be successful. Yes, sir. That's just like being, you know, well... I said I won't talk about stuff like this today. So um, that's like being a um, a teacher, you know, with no chalk or something. I don't know. I can give, give an example because I'm going to say what I want to say. That's like being a husband without having order in your home. Yeah. It can't happen. Okay. You can't be. It is literally impossible. You have the title, but you're a figurehead. Yeah, it won't be. The house is a circus. All right. Now, God. You got to have the authority. Okay, you got to have the authority, Will, in order to have success. All right. Um, there must also be a consistency coupled with that authority that makes the assignment or the success now followable. Somebody can follow your example. Somebody can follow your success when you are consistent with the authority. It can't be that uh, I want to have authority when things, I want things to go my way. That's good. Uh, but I don't want to be consistent when things don't go my way. Yeah. It doesn't work like that. Doesn't work like that. Can't pick and choose. If you will be the authority, you have to be the authority in the popular and in the unpopular. Yes, sir. In the happy and in the sad. Amen. When everybody wants to hug you and when everybody wants to stone you, mm. you still got to be willing to walk in the authority. The teaching. You got to be willing 
shell to walk in that authority. It's not just, you know, getting a big paycheck. There's also going to be some big headaches connected to that. Yes, sir. And I got to embrace the headaches the same way I embrace the bonus. Mm. I'm talking already. Like, and I said, I was just going to teach. What we we Everybody yes, wants sir. to be promoted. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. Everybody wants the six-figure job, but nobody wants six-figure responsibility. Wow. 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 With every promotion, another devil is coming. Yes, sir. That's not just in the spirit. That's naturally. Yes. You get a promotion on your job, a new devil is coming to visit you more at your job. More responsibility. Yes, sir. More accountability. More accountability. Yes, sir. More responsibility. More people you got to answer to mm -hmm. and for. Mm -hmm. How about that? So we got to be careful when we talk about all this authority that we want. We, you know, I, this, 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 is the, this is the millennial thing. Not even millennial. I can't say millennial. This is the generational thing. Because regardless of what generation you're born in, the, the hour now is everybody wants to be their own boss. Teach the big hint. Go ahead. Okay. Because in being my own boss, I can set my own hours. Huh. Uh, I, I, can, I, can, I can work my own schedule. Yeah. I can do my own thing. Well, with that Freedom, yes, sir. Comes a greater responsibility. You better go to work. <laughs> you better go to work. With that freedom of being able to sleep till eleven, mm -hmm. comes the lack of getting paid from eight to eleven. That's right. Yeah. That's good. Everybody good wants to be their own boss. I just mm -hmm. want to start my own company. Yeah, but you don't even have. You haven't even been proof. Let me say this. God middle. is not going to anoint <laughs> you entrepreneurially <laughs> until you've been proven working for somebody else. That's good, sir. Because until you've been proven not to be lazy, mm. right. God is not going to anoint you mm. to run now. Mm. 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 That's right. Mm. High time. He's not going to do it. It was a young man who, you know, I don't want to say too much because I might reveal him to some of the ones that might know him. But it was a young man uh, connected to a ministry that's like, you know, I'm, I'm going to go and do, you know, I'm going to just quit my job and I'm going to do full-time ministry. And, and, you know, I... I he, I was talking, not necessarily with him because he didn't want to hear me. I was talking at him, and, um, uh, you know, truth. he's like, well, you know, uh, I, I'm going to just do it. And I said, well, let's, let, let's really talk for a minute. Tell me your work history. T tell, me, tell me, you know, what your path mm, to yeah, this decision has been. Mm. Well, you know, uh, I did, I cleaned some houses or something for a couple of weeks, and uh, mm. I drew some pictures for people <laughs> for about two years, and yeah. I did. I said, well, <laughs> has anybody ever noticed your name on a payroll? Mm. Anybody? Has anybody ever had your name connected to their payroll? <laughs> well, why you ask me that? I just, I just, I just want to know. No, uh, no, nah, you know, all, mm. all this stuff I didn't do. I said, well, you don't need to try to go start none on your own. Yeah. Because if you haven't learned the principles, you can't be successful even though you're talented. Mm -hmm. And that's naturally and spiritual. Mm -hmm. Until you sit, until you sit down and learn from an example, mm -hmm. you have no path to be successful. Mm -hmm. The most crazy thing is putting somebody in a position to lead when they never saw leadership happen. Mm -hmm. That's good. They're setting themselves up and those following them mm. for disaster. Mm. You the first. Mm. You need a mentor. You need somebody that's been this way before that you can get up under and get some wisdom. All right, so, so you got to be consistent. All right, come, come with us. This is the point I was leaving on last week and I'm going to start on this week. Um, is that diligence is what will ensure good success. So we're teaching on, again, continuing from sustained success from last week. Gave a very quick, brief recap about territory being the foundation of success. Authority is a sign of success. Consistency coupled with authority will make the success followable. You create an example. And now I'm going to deal with, this is why I want to lay my head tonight for a good portion of time. Diligence will ensure good success. Diligence. The word diligence is defined, and I'm, I'm in Joshua chapter 1, and I'm going to read you some scripture in a moment. The, the word diligence is defined in our English dictionary as being, uh, it's, it's persevering and careful in work. Diligence is persevering and careful in work. Diligence, persevering and careful in work. All right, Let, let's look at Joshua chapter 1. 
I'm going to just start at the seventh verse. That's kind of where I picked up, left off last week. And I'm going to go through the tenth verse, um, most of the tenth verse. Joshua chapter 1, verse 7, teaching again on sustained success tonight. Finishing this off, Joshua chapter 1, verse 7. The verse that reads, Only be thou strong and very courageous, that thou mayest observe to do according to all the law which Moses my servant commanded thee. Turn not from it to the right hand or to the left. Be consistent, Joshua, that thou mayest prosper whithersoever thou goest. This book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night, that thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written therein. For then thou shalt make thy way prosperous, mm -hmm. and then thou shalt have good success. Good. Have I not commanded thee? Be strong and of a good courage. Be not afraid. Neither be thou dismayed, for the Lord thy God is with thee, whithersoever thou goest. Then Joshua commanded the officers of the people. So we identify here that, that God has already given Joshua some instruction. He says, listen, if you follow the path that Moses walked, if you, if you just walk out what you saw Moses do, I promise you, Joshua, that good success shall be your portion. Okay, he says, uh, Joshua, you don't have to recreate the wheel. You don't have to start from scratch. You don't have to, you know, do it your own way like your Frank Sinatra, old school. Um, uh. You, you, you got to realize that when you have a blueprint, mm. just follow the blueprint. You ain't got to try to make it fit and make it work. And what about this? He says, follow the blueprint. But I need you to understand, Joshua, that it's a responsibility in following the blueprint. And that is, you're going to have to stay in this word. He says, the word of God shall not depart from thee or depart out of thy mouth. I want you to meditate on it, Joshua, day and night. And every time, every time you do this, you're going to make your own way prosperous. You're going to find the success connected to your diligence. I want to give us this point when he's talking about diligence ensuring good success. There is a difference between consistency and diligence. Okay. All right, there is, uh, there is a difference. Now, you'll note the, the, the third point that we made last week and one of the things we said this week is that, you know, uh, there must be consistency with our authority. So we identified that in order to get or have sustained success, there must be a measure of consistency. But however, there is a difference between consistency and diligence. Consistency is the practice of a thing. Okay? Uh, consistency is the practice of a thing. But diligence is the product of a thing. Oh, oh, oh. Okay? I can be consistently wrong. <laughs> Uh-oh. <laughs> but I can't be diligently wrong. That's right. Mm. I can be consistently janky, mm -hmm. Kiana. But I can't be <laughs> diligently janky. Mm -hmm. but because diligence says huh? there is a quality Oh. Of my work. Yeah. Consistency says there's just a quantity. Yeah. I'm turning stuff out. I, I'm getting stuff done, but it ain't hitting no number. Right. I'm writing letters for you, Pastor, but Pastor, you got to go back and proofread and retype all of them. Mm. Your consistency is great. Your diligence is horrible. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> so consistency is good. But I got to make sure that there's a diligence to what I'm doing if I want to see success. Okay, when somebody is diligent, that means they are willing to go above and beyond every time, even for the most minute of things. Yeah. One of the things that hinders us as people, and I'm going to put myself in, is that when we feel like we know how to do something. Uh -oh. Because when we know how to do something, we don't follow directions no more. Yeah. Teach tonight, Ken, tonight. I feel God already. I feel God already. So, so I got to give Black a zinger. I gave him a good one last week, so I got to zinger this week. So, so when we're putting this desk together for the pastor, and, uh, you know, I'm saying, Minister Black, let's really take a look at the instructions. And let's do what the instructions say. And his rebuttal is, but pastor. I put desks like this together all the time. <laughs> uh, it's common that when this part is in a package, it goes this way. Because I do this. I said, well, minister, I understand what you're saying. 
However, there are instructions that are telling us to do the exact opposite of what you're saying. What are we going to choose here? Consistency oh. or diligence? Mm. His choice, consistency. Oh, my. So we go through the process of consistency <laughs> and find ourselves having to backtrack mm. and take out and redo uh -huh. because consistency trump diligence. Mm. Yes, sir. When diligence trumps <laughs> consistency, there is no more going back and fixing. Mm. Yeah. 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 Because I took my time to not know what I thought I knew. <laughs> <laughs> and follow the instructions that have been given. Yes, sir. That was a good one for men of black, but let me come pick all of us up. That's even in our own personal lives. <laughs> When we come into a church environment and we already know how to do marriage. Uh-oh. This is good teaching. <laughs> we already know how to do being a husband. We already know how to do being a wife. Yeah, you've been consistently poor. Mm. Mm. Teach us. But until I'm willing to listen to diligence and implement it, I'm going to continue to be a consistent failure. Mm. Mm. There, there, somebody said this, and this, this is true. Uh, you know, a broke clock is right two times a day. That's right. <laughs> it's, good. it's consistently right, at least twice. Yeah. Out of uh, uh, tw what is it, 2440, uh, 2440 minutes, of 2440, yeah, minutes, um, 1260, yeah, 2440 minutes, it's, you know, got this thing going on, but two of those minutes is right. Mm -hmm. So 2438 is doing his own thing. Mm -hmm. But two of them, they right. Mm -hmm. And the fact is, us, just like the broke clock, mm -hmm. will hinge on, I was right twice though. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Hold on to it. <laughs> I was right some. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right. Okay, so, so, so diligence is the product. It's the quality of what I do. But the consistency is just the practice. It's that I can turn things out. I, I can do things. God tells Joshua, don't just stop at being consistent. I need you to be diligent. I need you to remain in this word, doing it the way I want you to do it. And he says, I promise you, when you're diligent, you're going to find good success. There's a scripture in, in Proverbs chapter 22, uh, verse number 29. It's the last verse in Proverbs 22. He says, uh, the writer says, Seest thou a man diligent in his business? He shall stand before kings. He shall not stand before mean men. Hmm. All right? Uh, so, so the Bible even tells us, think as well, that when we learn how to be diligent even in the things, Sister Akasha, that we do well, we'll find, catch this, that God will change your audience. Amen. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, he says diligence makes you stand before kings and it dismisses mean men from your life. Mm. So, so folk that don't even mean you no good and folk that don't like you, the reason they stay around is because you're only consistent. Mm. Wow. Mean people don't disappear from you because they don't see the diligence to make them flee. Mm. Nobody that is being proven wrong all the time is going to stay in that place. Right. If every time, you know, you saying something and I'm wrong, either I'm going to change or I'm going to leave. That's mm -hmm. right. Because diligence is going to dismiss the mean man away from my presence. Okay, so he says we got to be diligent. Peter puts it this way. In 2 second, second Peter chapter 1, um, verse 10. You know, this is one scripture I like to quote this a lot. You know, it says, wherefore the rather brethren give diligence to make your calling and election sure. For if ye do these things, ye shall never fall. Mm -hmm. All right, so, so he says, I've got a responsibility uh, to make sure that I'm keeping my calling and my election in a diligent manner. Which means no matter where I go, and I say this all the time, and I'll continue to say it, or no matter what we do, people should always know that we belong to God. Mm -hmm. It should not be that because we're in this particular environment, there has been a shift in who we are, and we're no longer you know, exhibiting who God wants us to exhibit. That's a lack of diligence. Mm -hmm. That, that folks, you know, on your job don't, don't know you say that that's a lack of diligence. Right. You know, your family don't know you say classmates. That, that's that's a lack of your classmates mm -hmm. uh, don't know you say that's a lack of your teachers don't know you say that's a lack of diligence. 
You know, I, I, I really, uh, as we continue to grow and move, I'm excited about the teachers that are going to come visit. Uh, because I want to know when uh, Tony Jr.'s teacher comes in, hmm. uh, if she's going to be shocked to see him on the sound system. <laughs> the teacher. <laughs> certainly not him. No. no. It could have been a number of others, but it's certainly not him. Huh. I, I want to know if, you know, Caleb's teacher comes in and sees him up here doing Christmas plays and reciting with such elegance and, and yeah. leading and being a great man of God for them to say, mm, is that is that really Caleb? Mm. Is that the same Caleb that sits and goes to sleep in my class? Mm. <laughs> Diligence means I'm going to be consistently creating good work wherever I go so that good success will follow me. I want to give you something here. I'm going to give you this for free. Diligence is a principle. And principles cannot be undone. Mm -hmm. Diligence is a principle. And principles, Sister Thompson, cannot be undone. I'm going to take you a layer lower. God will always honor a principle. Mm -hmm. Catch it. That means even if I'm not necessarily doing right, mm -hmm. if I'm diligent in my work, there's always going to be a positive return. Mm -hmm. Because God honors principles. Catch this, not people. Mm -hmm. Bible says that God is not a respecter or an honorer, if you will, of persons, which means he does not take and put people up above. He's a he's a, a equal, you know, service employer. Uh, he, 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 he looks at all through the same eyes. But what he does re recognize, even as falsely, is his principles being put into place. So I can be a church goer. I can come to church all the time. I can do uh, the church thing all I want to do. And then there's this person who don't even mess with the church like talking about, but they, they've mastered how to be diligent. There's a success that's got to follow them because it's a principle that God is on. Mm -hmm. It's a principle that God is on. And that's what I feel like if the church, we can really catch a hold because to, to a degree, we, we get the, uh, well, at least we try to get the living right side. But we don't necessarily embrace the principal side of God. Mm. You know, we, we try to our best to embrace the faith walk. Mm -hmm. But we don't necessarily always embrace the principal walk. Good, so let, let me just go ahead and stir the pot a little bit. That's why the Evans always going to be blessed. Mm -hmm. just, I mean, hey, y'all going to hate on them. So that's cool. You know, but hate on me for saying them. Don't hate on them. Just, just, just deal with me. But, but God going to always bless them because they understand the principle of a thing. Mm -hmm. Hello, likes. Mm -hmm. when, when a person understands a principle... Pastor, what's a principle? A principle is a thing that no matter what I do, it's always going to give the same result. Yes. That's a principle. Okay. If, 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 if I plant a seed in the ground. Yes, sir. Even if I don't water it the way I should. Even if sun doesn't hit it the way it's supposed to. It's still going to produce something. Mm -hmm. Because it's communicated to the ground. Mm. that I got to do something because somebody put me in here. Yeah. It's got to happen. So if I want to see God work in my behalf, it matters not about my attendance in church. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It, it matters not about how much reading and studying I'm doing, but if I go back to am I operating in his principle? Here it is, Pastor. What's his principle? His principle is to love your neighbor as yourself. Mm. His principle is to bless those that curse you. That's right. mm -hmm. To pray for those that despitefully use That's you. Bible. Yes, That's what the principle is. So, Pastor, what are you telling me? I'm telling you God works in your favor when you learn how to bless your enemy. Mm -hmm. God works in your favor when you take what his principle is and operate it. Okay, he says this, and this ain't even about no money, but it's an accurate scripture. He says this in Genesis 8, 22. He says that as long as the earth remains, mm -hmm. seed time and harvest, mm -hmm. and coal and heat, mm -hmm. and night and day, and summer and winter shall not cease. Mm -hmm. Which means there will always be a principle, principle. In, in the workings in the earth. Yes, Every time there's night, there has to be a day. Mm -hmm. Every time cold comes, heat has to follow. Mm -hmm. 
Every time summer shows up, winter got to show up too. Every time I put a seed in the ground, there has to be a harvest. These are principles. And if I take a hold of the principle of God, then there has to be, there must be a return connected to me walking in the principle. Principles cannot be undone. Okay? So, so we said that diligence, again, is the persevering and careful, being careful in work. Uh, diligence has a meticulous side, uh, which means it gets into the nuts and bolts of a thing. Uh, it gets into the nitty gritty. Uh, diligence does just not, you know, uh, run over things. That, that's, that's how we avoid mistakes uh, when we operate in diligence. But when I'm speeding through something on my job, I'm rushing because the clock says 5.02, and I was supposed to get off at 5. Uh, God, they got me for two extra minutes. You know, that, that's what diligence goes out the window. You know, and, you know, we, we, you know, when you're a clock watcher, I hope I'm talking to somebody. Uh -oh. when, when you're a clock she watcher at work, uh, you're lacking diligence. Yeah. Mm. Because if you've got enough energy to put it on watching the clock change numbers, <laughs> you're missing the meticulous nature of being diligent in your business. Yeah. That's why you still have mean men that come to your desk. Oh, my. That's why the boss is still mean to you, it's good. but pleasant to Susie, because Susie has mastered being diligent. Wow. And then we want to play the race card. Help me tonight, what? Jesus. It's because she looks like the boss. No, it's because she realized being diligent is a principle. Good point, sir. And she don't have no education. I got a master's degree, and she don't even got a high school diploma, but she's diligent. Yes. And God says, I'm looking at the diligence, not the degree. Mm -hmm. Somebody should have caught that. That was tweetable. God says, I'm looking for the diligence, not the degree. So we got to throw out of the window what we don't have and learn how to operate in principles that we do have. We got greater access by being in the house of God. Yes, sir. But if I come in the house and let the teaching continue to go in one ear and out my toenail, mm. y'all catch that one next week. That's good, when I sir. continue to miss what God is trying to say, he's trying to give you the answers yeah. and set you up for sustained success. Oh, but we don't want to be diligent. We, don't. Mm. we hit and miss. We love hitting and miss. That's mm. our nature. Mm. I'm going to be on it today. But next week, I need to take a break. Mm. You know, I'm going to be on it. Today, Pastor, but you know, I catch you in a couple of weeks. I'll, I'll be back. But enjoy. Get some diligence in your life. Okay. So, to be diligent, to be diligent. All right. God says that, He teaches us tonight, even in out of Joshua, that there is a need, first lady, there is a need for both consistency and diligence. Okay? So we can't we can't throw consistency out the window because uh, we need consistency, but we gotta make sure that we're coupling that again with diligence. When a person is diligent, here's a good point. They're, they're able and willing to receive commands as well as give commands. Mm. The diligent person is willing to receive commands as well as give 